Oh, hello. Did you want to learn more about perspective? Ooh, perspective. Ooh, learn more. Watch the video. Okay. As I said in this video, I want to talk a bit more about perspective and the importance of cubes. Did you ever wonder why your drawing teacher kept on pestering you about the importance of drawing those cubes over and over again until you can draw them correctly in 3D? Well, let me tell you, it has to do with perspective. Once you learn how to draw a cube without drawing the horizon line and prolonging its edges all the way to the vanishing points, you start to have a basic grasp of perspective. By practicing and drawing cubes repeatedly, you start to have an understanding of placing vanishing points outside of your paper and keeping that point in mind whenever you sketch new elements in your drawing. The most important thing to take away here is your ability to identify where the vanishing point for each element of your drawing will be without actually putting them on paper. Next, I want to talk about a perspective learning tip that should help you level up your understanding in no time. As you can see, I have a Google Street View image of the lovely Amsterdam and what I'm doing is trying to find the horizon line of this image. I do that by identifying converging lines, which as we know converge to a vanishing point, which is located on our missing horizon line. In this case, because Google Street View uses a wide angle lens, we get quite a strong distortion towards the edge of the screen. To counter this, even when not using a wide angle lens, make sure to repeat this exercise on several elements in the picture before deciding where you want to place your horizon line. So in this case, I went with several buildings following the window lines, trying to see where is the area where these lines converge. You can see me drawing these lines from both directions, trying to narrow down the area where my horizon line should be. Keep in mind that the elements of an image are not always set parallel. Now that I have a pretty good feeling where the horizon line should be, I erase all the construction lines and place the horizon line. The meaning of this exercise is not just finding the horizon line, but also exercising the drawing of elements into a given perspective, so they fit. And we do this by drawing the cubes that contain all the elements in the visual. And yes, almost every element can be placed into a bigger or a smaller cube. As I mentioned in a previous video, we can construct almost every element with the help of cubes and cylinders, but we can also place almost every element into cube or assortment of cubes. Even with a more complex shape like the tower, first we identify the sides of the cube it would be placed in and then we can start cutting off the edges of the cube sculpting the shape that is needed for us. More importantly, we see how also humans have their place in our imaginary cubes. I see many times people who draw landscapes that are not actually bad at all, but it gets ruined because the person they placed there just doesn't fit into the perspective. This can be easily avoided by first placing a cube and then trying to fit our person into this cube. And obviously this trick can be used for all elements we want to have in our drawing. The final part of this exercise is actually creating a new element in the visual that wasn't there before. We need to create this element in such a way that it fits the perspective as much as possible. In this case, I decided to create a fast food stand. And no, it doesn't matter that it is in the middle of the road, as long as it's set within a functional perspective. So let us try the same exercise again from the same spot, but this time looking into an opposite direction. I tried to find a zone where all the lines converge using at least two different surfaces to construct these converging lines from. After I have enough converging lines, I estimate where the horizon line should be and I place it. Once this is done, I can start constructing cubes around the elements in the visual. Feel free to use already existing lines to help with the construction. In this case, I use the tram tracks. And finally, I tried placing a scooter on the street. Sadly, I made him too big because I didn't measure the distances properly. Uh, maybe in a future video we might talk about how to do the proper measurements. And as a final part of the exercise, I used an image with a long lens to not have the distortion at the edges. You can see how much easier it is to find the horizon line in this case. But because the angles here are much subtler, it is important to extend the size of our construction cubes to grasp how the elements fit into perspective. You can see me doing that with the tower in this case. And this is also what I would like to talk about as a conclusion to the video, namely returning to why it is important to have a good control over cubes. Simply put, it also gives us a good grasp on perspective. 
One could ask, how can you draw a correct cube without knowledge of perspective? And yeah, one would be right. It is a little bit of a chicken and egg scenario, but if we go all the way back from a square and then building the horizon line and drawing, the van drawing lines towards the vanishing points and we create a cube, and if we know how to create a cube correctly from any viewpoint, we can extrapolate that knowledge onto a whole image and construct proper perspective without having to clutter the visual with dozens of construction lines. I will leave you with this sketch I did due to being inspired by the winter landscape we saw previously. You can see how I place every element based on a cube they can be placed in. This should be our end result of doing our exercise on a regular basis. I hope you found this video useful. If you did, please hit that like button and also subscribe and maybe consider following me on Instagram. If you have any questions or comments, leave them in the comment section below. And uh, this was it for this week. So see you folks next time. Bye bye.